In this lecture, we are going to talk about budget constraint. A budget constraint tells us all possible bundles that the consumer can afford given his income. In real life, all of us face constraints. For example, students, they have a constraint on, uh, as their pocket money. So given their pocket money, they try to spend their pocket money in the best possible way they can. Similarly, a consumer, given his income, tries to consume the goods which will give him in such a way that it gives him maximum utility. So, suppose the consumer consumes N goods, X1, X2, Xn, and the prices of these goods are P1, P2, dot, 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 Pn respectively, then the consumer budget constraint is given by P1, X1, plus P2, X2, plus dot, 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 Pn, Xn, less than or equal to M. Now, what is P1, X1? P1 is the price of good 1 and X1 is the quantity of good 1. So, P1, X1 is the total expenditure by the consumer on good 1. Similarly, P2, X2 is the total expenditure by the consumer on good 2. P and Xn is the total expenditure by the consumer on good N. Therefore, the left hand side of the equation gives us the total expenditure that is being made by the consumer in consuming the goods x1, x2 to xn. The right hand side m is the income of the consumer. The total expenditure of the consumer should be less than or equal to the income that the consumer gets. So this is the budget constraint. The set of all affordable bundles at the prices p1, p2, dot, 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 pn and income M is called the budget set of the consumer. Now we will look into the graphical representation of the budget constraint and the budget set. So we have seen that the equation of the budget constraint was P1X1 plus P2X2 plus dot 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 Pnxn less than or equal to M. But if we take a two good case that the budget constraint becomes P1X1 plus P2X2 less than or equal to M. Now we have only two goods X1 and X2. Now the diagram here shows the budget set. So the line is the budget line and the inside region, the inside region is the budget set. So this is the budget set. Now if we take the equality in the above equation P1X1 plus P2X2 equal to M what, and if we plot them what we will be getting is the budget line. So what we essentially do is P1X1 plus P2X2 equal to M. We represent this equation in the form of this. So X2 is expressed in the form of other variables and this equation is essentially of the form of Y equals MX plus C. So this is of the form Y equals m x plus c so here the slope of the budget line is minus p1 by p2 and the y intercept is m by p2 as you can see the y intercept is m by p2 and the slope of the budget line is minus p1 by p2 Similarly, when you express x1 in terms of other variables, you can get the x-intercept which is m by p1. You can reason this out as well. For example, if you take this point, here the consumption of x2 is 0. As a result, the consumer is spending the entire income on good 1. And the entire income, if it's spent on good 1, will um, help the consumer to purchase m divided by p1 quantities of good 1. m is the income, p1 is the price of one unit of good 1. Therefore, the total units of good 1 that will be purchased will be m by p1. Similarly, m by p2. The negative uh, sign uh, in the slope of the budget line uh, clearly states or indicates that the budget line will be having a negative slope. So, it will be a downward sloping line. Now, uh, we will look into the slope of the budget line in another format. So del x2 by del x1 will give us minus p1 by p2. We have already seen that the slope of the budget line is minus p1 by p2 and this will be equal to dy by dx here. y is uh, x2 and x is x1. Therefore uh, delta x2 by delta x1 will give us minus p1 by p2. Now how did we get this equation? Now you can reason it using this. So P1 delta X1 plus P2 delta X2 will be equal to 0 Y. Now suppose the consumer is spending um, 5 rupees more on good 1. Therefore the consumer will have to spend 5 rupees less on the good 2 so that um, it is within the budget constraint. 
Now, it means that the increase in the expenditure on good 1 should be balanced by the decrease in the expenditure of good 2. So, what does this indicate? P1 delta x1 shows the change in the expenditure of good 1. P2 delta x2 shows the change in the expenditure of good 2. And the total change, the net change should be 0 in order to be within the budget constraint. The slope of the budget line measures the opportunity cost of consuming good one. Now, uh, given giving up the opportunity to consume good two is the true economic cost of good one. So, if you have two goods, good one and good two, if you are consuming good one, it means that you are sacrificing some amount of good two. If you are consuming, say, one more unit of good one, you'll have to sacrifice some amount of good two. So, uh, the true economic cost of good one is the opportunity to consume good two because that is the opportunity cost of consuming good one. Now, we will look into the shifts in the budget line. So, first. Uh, effects of changes in income. So we have seen that P1X1 plus P2X2 is equal to M. This is the budget line. Now suppose the income of the individual increases. If the income of the individual increases, it means that the consumer will be able to buy uh, more of both the goods. That is, if they are normal goods. So if the consumer is able to buy both more of both the goods, the budget line will shift outwards as you can see. So, uh, this was the horizontal intercept M by P1. Now, the income has increased from M to M1 dash. Therefore, the horizontal intercept will now become M dash by P1. And obviously, M dash by P1 will be greater than M by P1 because uh, M dash is greater than M. Similarly, M dash by P2 will be greater than M by P2. So, we see that the budget line shifts outwards parallelly because the income of the individual has increased. Now we will look into the effects of the changes in the prices. Now the prices can either increase or the prices can decrease. We will look at both the cases. The one on the left shows the effects of increase in the prices. Now we know that the horizontal intercept is M by P1. Now if the price of good one increases, so P1 increases to P1 dash. As a result, M by P1 dash reduces and as you can see, this is m by p1 this is m by p1 dash which is obviously smaller than m by p1 there is no change in the price of good 2 there is no change in the income in the individual therefore the vertical intercept remains at m by p2 and as a result there is swivel of the budget line so this was the initial budget line this is the final budget line and there is a swivel so as you can see there is a swivel of the budget line the earlier the slope was minus P1 by P2, now the slope is minus P1 dash by P2 because uh, P1 has changed to P1 dash. Now, since P1 dash is greater than P1, therefore P1 dash by P2 will be greater than P1 by P2. And as a result, the slope of the budget line increases when the price of good one increases. Similarly, we can also say that when the price of good one decreases, there is an outward swivel of the budget line as you can see there is an outward swivel of the budget line so the horizontal intercept increases vertical intercept remains the same so this is the initial budget line and this is the final budget line and there is an outward swivel now um, again the slope earlier was minus p1 by p2 now the slope is minus p1 dash by p2 now since p1 dash is less than p1 therefore the slope of the budget line decreases when the price of good one decreases so when the price of good one increases there is a swivel of the budget line in inside and when the price of the good one decreases there is a swivel of the budget line outside now let's look into two more cases the one on the left shows that the prices of both the goods change but in the same proportion so this is the initial budget line so as you can see the horizontal intercept is m by p1 vertical intercept is m by p2 now uh, the prices of good one and good two increase from p1 to p1 dash and p2 to p2 dash respectively but the increase in the prices uh, here sorry the, here there is a decrease in the price so the decrease in the prices of both the goods is the same so p1 becomes p1 dash and p2 becomes p2 dash now um, as you can see p1 dash is less than p1 therefore the horizontal intercept increases 
and since P2 dash is also less than P2, therefore the vertical intercept also increases. Now we will see that there will be a parallel shift outwards. This is not because of the changes in the income. The income is held constant here. What is changing here is that the prices of good 1 and good 2 both has decreased, but both of them they have decreased in the same portion, in the same amounts. Now uh, suppose the price of 2 would not have increased then the change in the budget line uh, would have been as shown so this would have been the new budget line and the change would have been this uh, yellowish greenish shaded area now after this suppose the price of good to decreases so from this budget line you will move to this budget line and the change will be that light blue region now the question is why they will be parallel they will be parallel because the changes in the price they of both the goods has been the same now if the prices change in different proportions as you can see in this diagram if the prices changes in same proportion then it might not be a parallel shift here also the price of good one decreases from p1 to p1 dash because of which there's a swivel outwards the price of good two also decreases from P2 to P2 dash because of which there is a swivel outward but the decrease in the price 2 is very less compared to the decrease in the price 1 and as a result we see that the slope of the budget line has actually reduced. If the decrease in the price of good 2 was more than the decrease in the price of good 1 then actually the slope of the budget line would have increased and we would have something like this. So if this was the case, this was the initial budget line and if the decrease in the price of good 2 was more than the decrease in the price of good 1 then we will get something like this and the slope of the budget line would have actually increased if you compare these two budget lines the slope of this budget line is actually more as compared to the slope of this budget line therefore we say if the price of good 2 decreases more then the slope of the budget line actually decreases now we would look into a concept known as numerator goods. So given the budget line P1 X1 plus P2 X2 equal to M, if we divide both the sides by P2, what are we going to get? We are going to get this. And if we divide both the sides by M, we are going to get this. Now what does the first equation represent? P1 by P2 X1 plus X2 equals M by P2. Here, uh, good 2 is the numerator good. Why? Because the because P1 by P2 X1 plus X2 equals M by P2 also represents a budget equation where P2, the price of good 2 is taken to be 1. So if we take the price of good to be 1, what, then what will be the price of good 1? It will be P1 by P2 and what will be the income of the individual? It will be M by P2. So if we uh, keep the price, if we fix the price of one of the goods to be 1 and we calculate the price of the other good and the income in terms of that, then um, what we are going to get is a, then uh, we are incorporating a concept known as a numerator good. Here good 2 will be known as the numerator good and the price of good 2 which is taken to be 1 is the numerator price. The numerator price is the price relative to which we are measuring the other prices in income. So here the price of good 2 is 1 and relative to this we are measuring the other prices that is price P1 by P2 of good 1 and the income M by P2 of the individual. So we have taken one of the goods to be the numerator good whose price we have fixed it to be 1 and then we are calculating the prices of the other goods and the income of the individual.